Welcome guys to another bullet journal setup. This one is for the month of June and we are ready to explore and learn a little bit about the beautiful country of Chile. So this month is my birthday month, so I, I always love my birthday, who doesn't like celebrating? Uh, but it's also the last month that I'll be sharing in this bullet journal, so it's a bit bittersweet. We'll be finishing up this journal and starting a new one in the coming weeks, so if you want to stick around and like what I create, do please subscribe to the channel so you can see more of what I create. But let's get started, and we're starting with the cover page. So I was absolutely fascinated with what I saw of Chile. I had never really seen the shape of the country itself and found it the most interesting one yet. It starts in the centre of South America along the west coast and travels all the way down in a really skinny formation all the way to the bottom tip of South America, which means the conditions really change heavily through each of the regions. So because I found this so fascinating that there's such extremes of like arid desert down to glaciers, I thought it would be cool to show the regions in a bit of a graphic kind of way. So I'd explore sort of each of the terrains and sort of represent them with a color. So I chose a color palette that started at like a warm reddish orange and then moved down to some cooler blues at the base. Now before I get started on talking about the facts I found and the things about Chile that I want to discuss, I thought I'd let you know what I'm doing here first. So as you can see, I am using paint, um, but the paint I'm using is just acrylic paint and some are rather empty. <laughs> and I was not using acrylic gouache even though I really wanted to because I love the opaqueness of acrylic gouache. Um, but the colors I have are very sort of basic and primary and I just didn't feel like doing a lot of mixing because I wanted to create just really stark, bold, simple colors um, that I could chuck on quite quickly. So I went to my acrylic paints, which I have um, you know, quite a few of and lots of different color ranges. So I was able to choose a few colors without, with minimal mixing required and just found this really nice palette that I wanted to go to. And this blue here that I'm about to use, this cool, it's almost like a purpley blue, um, is just so gorgeous. I think it's called French, French blue, um, but I'm obsessed with it. It is also matching my nails um, and it's completely finished now, so I need to buy a new one. Um, but yeah, so just using the acrylic paint to paint the base color for each of these strips that I'm creating. Uh, was hoping for a clean line in some of the cases, just not the case. <laughs> and I'm also using washi tape to create sharp lines and the, making the divider tabs as well. So it's a really nice, um, simple way to create some color on your journal. And now we can get a little bit more detailed. So the first strip at the top of the page, I decided to paint um, a representation of like a desert scene. The Atacama Desert is actually the driest desert in the world that's known for this, other than the polar deserts. It receives less than one millimeter of precipitation each year. And some areas haven't seen a drop of rain in more than 500 years, which is just incredible. They use the desert for experiments for Mars simulations, which I thought was very cool. And one feature of this desert that I found really interesting and I thought it set apart from the others is this 10 meter high cement hand that comes out of the sand off of the Pan American Highway in the desert. And I thought that makes it look even more alien out there and sort of is a really nice distinguishing feature to make sure that people know this is the Atacama Desert that I'm illustrating. So the next strip down in this paler orange, I decided to showcase the very mountainous and volcanic landscapes that can be found in Chile. And this one in particular, this particular volcano, is the largest in Chile and it's called Ojos del Salado. And my bad, I think I said the largest in Chile, but it's actually the largest in the world. So the highest peak, the highest volcano peak in the world is right here in Chile. It's actually on the border of Argentina in Chile. Um, but the peak is at almost seven kilometers above sea level. The next strip down is our sort of a beach coastal realm. There are a lot of beautiful beaches across Chile and in particular I thought I would reflect on the island that is very famous and in the Chilean territory and that is Easter Island. Its native name is called Rapa Nui 
And the way I felt that I could illustrate this volcanic island was by showing the amazing sculptures that are there. I'm sure we've all seen the giant um, heads that are created in Easter Island. They're famous for them. There's over 900 statues across the island itself. They are called Moais and they were created between the 13th and 16th century by the inhabitants of the island. Um, I have no idea how they built them, but here they are. They're huge and they're awesome and they're all over. So showing that and some palm trees on a beach sort of scene um, also illustrates how the beaches over in Chile are well known and really huge with the surfing community. Um, lots of great spots to surf. So definitely wanted to get that in there. So the next one down is we're now moving to the mountainous regions that are a little bit more lush. So you've also got a lot of forest in Chile. So you've got the arid desert, you've got beach, coast, volcanoes, and now you've got mountains and lush foliage and forestation. It's just amazing. Now the Andes form an exact natural border between Chile and Argentina. I always wondered why, why did they invent a country that's just uh, this skinny strip going right down and now I know why it's because on the other side of the Andes is Argentina and on the west side is Chile so it's just like a nice natural border division between the countries so yeah it just made a little bit more sense as to why it was shaped that way so here in this strip I wanted to illustrate the mountains but also a lake beneath it because this is also called the lake district of Chile um, and the imagery from this place is just spectacular just mountains and then the these beautiful colored um, crystal lakes they're just gorgeous so I kind of it's hard to illustrate that in a um, in a monochrome uh, format that I've done but it was it was really beautiful and then our final strip down below is the southernmost tip of Chile and it's also referred to as the region of Patagonia between Argentina and Chile and on the Chilean side you will find glacial fjords and temperate rainforest so incredible difference to the top of our scale here at the desert so then to title this cover page, I decided to write Bacan Chile in June and Bacan means uh, cool. And it's something, it's a word that they use a lot in Chile that means cool. And I just thought it was very cool to discover. It sort of had that temperature feel to it. I just liked the word to be honest. Um, so I used that there on the cover page to give us an insight into what this theme will be like. Um, so sticking to that color palette, I used the national flower, which I'll talk about more soon. And then finishing it off with some celestial elements in gold that sort of added, I think, to the um, cool and warm color palette. So there's our cover page. I hope you like it. A bit different to usual, but I'm happy that it turned out the way I wanted it to. And so now I'm moving on to the calendar spread for this month where I'm starting with a pretty basic calendar that I wanted to get across the entire page. I like to keep this spread as minimal as I can usually and especially in this particular design theme that I've got going on, I kind of wanted something minimalistic but vibrant. So starting out by mapping out the boxes, I've decided to put three days on the left hand page and four on the right hand page so that I've got left a little strip down the side um, for a bit of notes. Um, it just will help to add anything that I need to remember for the month in a section like this. So as it kind of rushed through on the cover page, I wasn't able to explain my sort of the thoughts behind the font choices that I used. And one of the styles that you'll see me use throughout this whole setup is Quite a simple one to achieve. It's basically a serif kind of font, um, but then instead of coloring it in sharply um, and making it really neat, you're very loose with it. You just do the outline on the outside and then almost fill it in with dots and then keep a blank section through the middle. So it sort of gives you this idea of erosion and gives a very desert vibe to it, I think. Um, so I've used that everywhere and now I've used it on the title page here and on the cover and here on the calendar. Um, so just doing that and finding, I found colors of my textures that matched completely, um, not perfectly, but very close to the paint colors that I used. Um, so that made it good too, because it's always uh, a little bit stressful when you have to use the same paint color all the way through the journal. Um, but when you can find a marker that matches, it just saves a whole lot of work. So it was nice to be able to use textures for this part. And I thought I'd continue those triangular shapes that I used on the dividers to represent each of the days of the week as well. 
and just using my Pigma Microns to finalize all the fonts and a little bit of calligraphy for the title for June and then I was able to decorate it. Now the piece I'm going to be drawing on this page is a couple of animals from Chile. Um, the national animal is the South Andean deer, uh, which is also called the Hjumul. I think I'm saying that right. Um, this deer is native to Chile, but it's also very small numbers. So it is a endangered species and is trying to be protected to increase the numbers. There's actually only 1500 or so left in the wild today. So I did want to draw a deer, but I also wanted to include the national bird because it does have a very cool bird as their national symbol. And both of these animals are actually on the coat of arms itself. So the bird is the Andean condor and it is a mammoth bird. I would not want to come in close to this one. It's actually really, really creepy looking, I think. Um, and there's actually a photo I found where a lady was right up close to this condor. And it was very strange because it was on Instagram just in my feed and I hadn't been researching Chile yet. So that was a very interesting um, thing that happened. But anyway, seen as it wasn't the most attractive bird, I didn't want to give it a full on headshot, um, but I did love the wingspan of this incredible bird. So it is a bird of prey and it's found all through the Andes. And they are normally about one meter to 1.3 meters large, but their wingspan can get up to 3.3 meters. In general, they're three meters wingspan, which is absolutely phenomenal to me. And this is why I do not want to come close to them. They would freak me out. Um, but I was quite happy to draw the silhouette here at the top of the notes section. And I just wanted to keep the drawings quite simple. Again, just using my Figma Micron, just like a fine liner and a little bit of line art to suggest that there's something else going on in this page. And that is how this calendar spread ended up turning out quite clean and simple, but I think it'll be really effective in my planning for the month ahead. Now moving on to the next page, which is my um, gratitude list. And this part is just a small page so far because I'm only just getting into gratitude journaling over the last few months. Um, I'm just writing a few like little sentences or like a paragraph here and there throughout the month. And it's a way of getting into this because I'm, I'm finding it really helpful and it's just really nice to have a reminder of what we should be grateful for. So I'm liking the whole journaling for gratitude, um, but I still haven't managed to fill a spread yet. So I think I'll keep it at a page for the moment until I'm, you know, divulging so much every month. And like in the previous months, I am loving having a quote page here. So the quote that I was able to discover when looking into Chile was um, a, a quote that was actually in the form of graffiti in a place called Valparaiso. Um, and this place looks so cool. It is a seaport town right on the coast, um, not too far from the capital city of Santiago. And it just looks so colorful and vibrant. And the culture there is very vibrant and youthful. So it's a definite tourist spot um, for definitely someone like me. I'm keen to get there. The, the street art is incredible. Every, every facade, every wall I saw in the images is covered with art. So it's a very inspiring place to look at. So I kind of wanted to take inspiration from that idea of these colorful houses all perched on cliff sides. I seem to always get inspired by colorful houses everywhere we go. Um, this town in particular is no different. So I did find myself very inspired to create some sort of design element using those houses. And the name Valparaiso is actually called the Jewel of the Pacific. That's what it sort of means. And I thought they kind of reminded me of jewels as well. So by using the colors that I'd already chosen, I tried to place them in quite oddly and angular uh, with little bits and triangles kind of popping out here and there and make the overall page a vibe from Valparaiso streets. And you sort of get the idea where I'm going, I think. It's just so colorful and just very abstract with the way things are placed. And I just thought that could make a really cool, interesting spread. So it's very fresh and vibrant and it's quite different to what I normally do. So I was happy with this. And then the quote that I used for this page, I thought it was so sweet. It's quite a bohemian kind of city. And I've written, we are not hippies, we are happies. And I thought that was just the sweetest little quote to have reminding you as you're walking the streets of this place. I took the meaning of that as sort of a statement saying, we're not 
careless people um, here, we're sort of carefree and happy and just enjoying things. And I like that idea. So that's the quote. I always like to go for something um, very positive and to remind us to be grateful. And I think that is ideal. So be carefree and enjoy life as much as you can and help others. That kind of really good mentality kind of thing to remind me of on this page. I also loved working with these different kind of font styles that um, I've chosen to do and went for something quite hippie-ish and quite fresh and I really enjoyed working with these paint pens which I, I tried a lot of different things this month just kind of moving aside from the realism I do a lot of realism and I just want to get a little bit more I don't know designy that's not a word at all but that's the word I'm gonna use more designy and more graphic um, for this month so I hope you're enjoying it Now moving on to the right hand side of this spread which is where I do my meal planner for the month. Uh, we just have the one sort of set meal plan for the month. Sometimes it goes a little astray but most of the time we follow it because it just makes things so much easier to have just seven days of meals that we alternate throughout the month. It might seem boring to some but it just makes life so much simpler. Um, and I'm all about the simple life. So on this page I mainly wanted to focus on the area of where the meals are actually going to be written so I kept that triangle action happening and then I added some sort of skew if cubes or squares to continue that theme from the left hand side so that it really works as a whole spread and then inside those cubes I wanted to do the national foods um, or at least the a national statement food and drink from there because the national food is actually pastel de choclo, which appears to be a, a kind of a casserole dish, which once, once again isn't overly great to draw, but something I thought would look cute on here and is the next best thing to eat in Chile, which is the empanadas, which are pastries filled with meat or cheese or mussels. Um, I haven't tried one and I really like to, they look yum to me. And then the other drink that I wanted to put on there as well is called Terremoto, which is a beverage that contains white wine, pineapple ice cream and grenadine. I thought that sounded very interesting to try and very tropical. Um, so that's on there too. So finishing up that spread and now we're moving on to the goodliness page. So for the final page in today's video, um, I will continue the setup in next week's, which was part two of this setup. So for this goodliness page, this is where I do my habit tracking. Um, and for this one, I wanted to focus on the Chilean national dance, which is called the Cueca. Now the Cueca is known as a handkerchief style of dance, which is traditionally performed between a man and a woman. And it's described as a courting dance. And the Cueca is depicting courting rituals between a rooster and a hen. So I thought it was really um, interesting and the dance itself is quite famous. You'll often see it performed around September 18th, which is the Chilean Independence Day, I guess, known as Fiestas Patrias, which is a national holiday that sort of runs across three days. So where they don't they don't work, they do a lot of dancing and barbecues, known as asados. And this Quaker dance is um, quite popular around that time. So I wanted to illustrate a couple doing this dance in the national costume as well. And the ladies' dress is called a huasa or vestido de huasa, I have no idea if I'm saying that right, also known as a Quaker dress. And then the man is wearing a chamanto, which is basically like a poncho, but made in Chile with silk thread and wool. And then I did want to illustrate them in some sort of background. So I wanted to showcase uh, where I could picture them performing this dance. And I'm just picturing it in a, uh, a beautiful sunset kind of valley with lots of grapevines in the background because one other thing that I loved finding out about Chile is all the wines that are made there and I recently tried a Chilean wine a nice red wine from there and it was very tasty um, so I just thought it would be cool if they were you know dancing a fiesta um, of the Quaker out in the vineyards um, at a winery or something. I just thought it would be quite nice. And I've sort of drawn the mountains in the distance and showing you all those vineyards and hopefully giving off a nice, happy sort of partying vibe. 
which I thought tied nicely in with goodliness and keeping that positive energy going and trying to get through those uh, ticking of boxes for all the good habits as we go. Now, what I'm doing to illustrate this, I did try and go a little bit more uh, cartoony, I guess, I'm trying to get a little bit more illustrative in how I draw stylized. Um, it's it's tricky. I'm not in love with it. I definitely don't hate it. I do like the colours in the end that came out and the feeling of it. Um, but I'm still working on creating more of a stylistic approach to my people when I'm illustrating them. So yes, yeah, still working on that part. But I'm just using my markers again for this page and then a little bit of coloured pencil on top. You've probably seen me use the coloured pencils to enhance pictures all throughout this setup and I find it's it's very handy to have the pencils as a backup when you're using marker because obviously some of the blends you just can't get with marker so having having the pencils to finish it off is always very helpful. And I love all these tones. I had to add green in this one because you just can't do vines without, like vineyards without green. Um, so I did have to bring, introduce a new color, but in the end it didn't really matter that much. So as I said before, this is the final page of today's video. I will continue my setup into next week's video. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe so you can check out the rest of what I discovered in Chile and how else I set up my journal. Um, so the mind map will be coming next week and I will give you a spoiler. I really like it. <laughs> um, I really, really like the vibrant colors I've used through this particular setup. So I hope you do too. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you do want to hang around the channel, I am also starting to do some more um, book reviews on here. And the most recent book that I mentioned in my last video, if anyone missed it, is Where the Crawdads Sing. I've just finished reading it. Actually, I should say listening to it because it was one of the first audiobooks that I have listened to and absolutely loved it. Um, so yeah, I would recommend reading it. And if you want to have a chat about it, join me in a future video where I will discuss where the crawdads sing. If you want more from me, don't forget to check out the links down in the description box to my Instagram and my Patreon accounts for more. And if you do like this particular journal theme, it will be available on my shop soon. Um, next week will be when I upload it. Each theme I create as a blank theme, so it will work for any month that you want to use it in your own journal. And if you want to sign up on Patreon, you do get that for free if you sign up to the middle or top tier so yeah check those out if you're interested and otherwise I thank you so much for being here and watching hope you learnt a little bit of something from Chile like I did and I hope that you got my excitement for this amazing place um, maybe I encourage you to go and research and have a little look at some of the photos that just looks spectacular so yeah hopefully I get there one day <laughs> thank you for watching and I will see you again next week bye bye